Thomas the tank engine was feeling bright and cheerful. It was a splendid day. Good morning, he whistled to some cows, but the cows didn't reply. Never mind, said Thomas. They're busy with their breakfast. Next, he saw Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Care for a race today? But all Bertie could say was, Ouch! That's another hole in the road. I'm sorry, Bertie, smiled Thomas. Thomas was still in good spirits when Bertie arrived at the next station. Bad luck, Bertie. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. And Thomas puffed away towards the big station. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad, he grumbled. Percy goes to work at the harbor, and I do his job. Here, there, and everywhere. Take that. Oh, groaned the freight cars. Just you wait. We'll show you. Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James. If you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt freight cars here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up, he puffed. It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter, asked Thomas. He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I, I mean, I am, stuttered James. I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. Gordon and James snickered quietly to each other. Some of James's cars were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The cars were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stone from the quarry and set off back to the junction. lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the cars. Go faster, go faster. They pushed Thomas over the switches. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Just my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Duck pulled away the cars, and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A car full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. The driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered, and so is Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. No, indeed, spluttered Gordon. A mere misunderstanding, Thomas. All's well that ends well. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. My road's being mended now. Oh, I am glad, replied Thomas. Thanks for all you did, added Bertie. Now I know I can trust an engine, especially if his name is Thomas. Gordon and James puffed silently away to the shed. But Thomas still had company. Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The toad, who was looking forward to a ride home, noisily agreed.